The famous saying we hear is never quit or never give up. On the surface, this seems like good advice, and it can be, but it's not totally accurate. There are actually times when quitting is a good thing, and successful people do it all the time. So let's see what I mean by this. In the book called The Dip by Seth Godin, the author outlines the fact that when you are working towards anything really worth your time, like getting a college degree, trying to become an elite athlete, musician, etc., making your business grow, or getting the promotion for your job, there will always be a dip after the initial and often more fun stages. When you're in your first week of college pursuing that degree finally, or just starting your business or learning a new instrument, it's usually very exciting. You got a lot of energy and are just looking ahead and imagining everything the future may hold. That's why at the beginning of an endeavor, if you graph your effort versus your results, it's all uphill. You study really hard and do well in that first test or practice a lot and get really good at the instrument. But then comes a dip at some point, which is a downward slope, and how long this is differs for every situation. This is where you work harder, but you don't see your results even go up. And this is what separates the top tier people from everyone else. Top tier people push through the dip and make it to the other side, which is where success is, where your results shoot upwards as you can see on the graph. The dip is like organic chemistry in college or maybe some tough engineering class that a lot of people fail. Or that plateau in your business where it isn't growing at all with all your increased hard work, and so on. So if you're in college, you might be studying twice as hard as last semester and doing worse on exams. So what's happening? Well, it's the dip. And how long it lasts depends on you, the situation, how hard you work to get past it, and more. Now this is where you should not quit. Many people do quit during the dip or even right before and it's very easy to do. It's natural for us to quit when things get a little hard. It's why some people drop the weights when their muscles start to hurt just a bit versus others who push past that pain for just a few reps. But moving past that pain is what separates the great from the average. Remember, if what you have started is worth doing, then quitting in the dip typically just wastes your time. If you can't make it through the dip, consider not embarking on the journey to begin. Now I know this can be hard to know ahead of time, but it's something to think about as much as possible before making any big decisions. But not everything has a dip and looks like that curve from before. The author lists another kind of curve called a cul-de-sac, which is just basically a slightly wavy curve. No matter how hard you work, you don't see any life improvement. You may know this as a dead-end job, for example. If you're in a cul-de-sac, this is where you need to quit. It may be a dead-end job, a product that will just not sell anymore, or maybe you're in a relationship that no matter what will not improve and is not enjoyable anymore. Now note there is a big difference between strategic quitting and failing. Failing is when ideally you could keep going, but it's too hard and you just don't want to deal with the pain or the work and you give up. It's when you don't chase your dreams anymore and you say, I'll never make that much money or travel the world or write that book or become a something in terms of career. Strategic quitting is making a realization that you're in a situation that is not beneficial to your goals and moving on to something better. It's about knowing you're in a dead end job and going on a different path, or it's knowing there's something significantly better out there for you that is worth doing and you can make it through that dip that will occur. So there's a difference between just dropping out of college because it's hard and you can't put in the work and choosing a different major because you realize it will give you more career options or simply more enjoyment in the future. Sure, you could call both of them quing, I guess, but one is strategic to benefit your future and the other is giving in in response to short-term panic and avoiding pain. In fact, most of the time when people quit, it's because of short-term satisfaction. You really want that nice body, but it's also really satisfying to just put the weights down and go home and watch TV. Remember, the long-term benefits of what you embark on are on the other side of the dip. The long-term benefits are also often easier to imagine the closer you get to them. In the book, he outlines that during a marathon, if you were to graph when people quit versus the mile they're on, most would not quit at the 25th mile when they're almost done, even though that's when they're the most tired. People quit at like mile 15 when the end is still far away. If you're in your final year of college, you can probably make it through that final tough class. But that really hard class in the beginning of your sophomore year, that could make you drop out more likely because you don't even see the end of the race yet. So do winners ever quit? Of course. The person working at McDonald's who quits to go back to school, or the entrepreneur who is selling something that is very outdated and quits to try a new product or market. Several years ago, three guys tried to start a dating site that just wasn't working. So they decided to strategically quit that endeavor and try something else. That something else became YouTube. So yeah, you could say they quit, but of course we'd argue that it was the smart thing to do. Here's some general advice I found very well put in the book. Don't quit your long-term goals, whether it be a certain income, career, relationship, lifestyle, and so on. Quit whatever's not working to get you there. Don't quit while in the dip, assuming whatever you set out to do is worth the work you're putting in, unless maybe you know there's something else you should be doing that's also worth your time, which you will be able to make it through any dips that occur. 
but if you find yourself quitting in every dip, you'll wind up not finding what you enjoy and you won't become an expert in anything. Sometimes it isn't so obvious what is a dip and what is a dead end, but it's something you learn over time and hopefully you keep this information in mind whenever you're in tough situations in the future. Think about whether it's a dead end or just a dip and think about whether the other end of the dip is truly what you want. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.